All right, the next thing I want to talk about here is bacterial attachment, okay? And bacterial attachment can be known as adherence, and that is the ability to attach to a substrate. And it requires specific adherence um, structures, such as pili, and um, such as pili and other things that I'm going to talk about short. So, you know, bacteria want to adhere to substrates. They want to adhere to, in some cases, to form biofilms and other sort of things um, in nature, which is important. Okay. So the most common structures that bacteria use um, to attach to a substrate is pili and frimbri. Okay. And they're straight filaments of protein monomers called pillin. So they're straight filaments of protein monomers called pillin. Okay. That's what these are composed of. And um, they're different from the pili, the pili that you might have learned about previously, which is a sex pilus, um, which is involved in conjugation and the transfer of genetic material from one organism to another, from one cell to another. Um, so they're they're not quite the same, but these are but they have the, they use the same name. Okay. Another type of attachment um, organelle is membrane bound um, extensions of the cytoplasm called a stalk. Okay, and the tip of the stalk secretes um, adhesion factors called a holdfast, okay? And that attaches the bacteria to its environment. Now, the thing I kind of want to point out here is that these pili and frimbri are, you know, they're straight chain filaments of protein monomers, or coast, okay? So they're made of protein. Now, the stalk is kind of a really interesting case because it's completely different, okay? It's a membrane-bound extension of the cytoplasm. So this is, it's, it's not the same at all, okay? It's not a structure specifically made for attachment in the sense that it's not designed, it's not made from polypeptides or, or something. It's an extension of the cytoplasm of the cell, which is a, a very different way of, um, of, go, of, of going about attachment than, say, using the pili, all right? Um, and some bacteria, they can be gram-negative or gram-positive, will have capsules, okay? And a capsule consists of a polysaccharide coating, basically, okay? It's, um, it's, a, it's sort of a protective coating around the bacterial cell. And it's found outside the cell wall. So it can be gram-negative, gram-positive cells, um, can both have capsules, not all, Bacteria have capsules, though, okay? So, you know, make that clear right now. Not all of them do. And the capsule can be used in attachment, okay? So the capsule bacteria can avoid the immune system by, you know, the, the ability of this capsule is that it can kind of, you know, um, shield the um, bacteria from, like, phagocytosis, okay, from being broken down by in the body, okay? W which can have a really big effect on, you know, its its ability to act as a pathogen, which which is important here because you know you want to identify pathogens, and sometimes the capsule form of a of a bacteria is you know pathogenic, while you have the on capsule uh, on capsulated form of it, and um, it's not pathogenic. So this the capsule could really make a big difference in terms of you know whether or not this thing is dangerous, and. Also, if you want to, in the lab, identify the capsule, and you may very well have to do this in your lab, um, you want to use what's known as a negative stain, okay? And basically what the negative stain does is it sort of stains the background and leaves sort of like a halo around the bacteria. And if you see that halo, that sort of area of clearing, then you know that you have a capsule. If not, then you don't have a capsule. So, you know, I just want to point out the, that the way people discover whether or not their bacteria has a um, has a capsule is by looking for the clearing around the cell and using what's known as a negative stain.